OK. Sanji Chedon Soju Chenom La Chanchu Pado Dani Jason Dagi Jinso Jive Sonom Jin Rola Pensar Sanji and Roba Isho Sanji Chedon Soju Chen Chanchu Pado Dani Jason Jie Dagi Jinso Jive Son Rola Pensar Sanji and Roba Isho Sanji Chedon Soju Chenom Chanchu Pado Dani Jason Jie Dagi Jinso Jive Son Rola Penser Sanjian Roba Shu, Sanjay Tamje Dewa Tang, Dewi Jodo Demba, Dong Honda, Dong Haji Jodan, Trava Juje, Dong Hame Be Dewa Tang Mendrava, Yerin Chadang de Trave, Tang Yamla, Never Choro, Jungani Var, and Jam Chuji, Kungai Shi, Demba Sanzeba, Chense Nuva, Yung Jinroving, Yunzi, Mayu in Yamala, so are they. Good morning, happy Easter. <sighs> Today I'm going to give a talk about my beloved and teacher, uh, Dishun Rinpoche III. And he lived in both 19th and 20th century, as well as in Tibet in the West. Although he was a great Buddhist master whose life story can be found in many books today. I am going to share what I remember of him and how I was with him. Also, many of his students are still around, even here, some of them. In 1906, on the third day of the first month, in the year of Fire Horse, he was born. His father's name was a doctor Namja Doje, and the father's background was um, all uh, doctor's lineage way back in uh, legend, it says, in the 8th century. There is the emanation of the Bamasambawas, like Ling Kesa, king of Kesa, and he is a doctor. So the lineage through the all 8th century. And today, even they call Chohu Koga Chang, which is the only that town has the name of Koga, which means white gown family, because the doctor is wearing the, the uh, white gown. So, it's there. so his father's name was Namja Doji, Dr. Namja Doji. And his mother's name was Pema Chunzum. And they gave birth to the first child, and a very special sign appeared. While his mother, like Tibetan custom, when they're pregnant women, they always go to the uh, charities and to the uh, koras and uh, stupas and the monasteries. So the mm, she was a uh, mother was going around the uh, kora and. Uh, Talung Monastery, and one time she found something was nicely wrapped with a kada, and inside was the yellow zambalha tanka. She looked around, but there was no one was around, so she took the tanka home and kept, and this was the special sign. The baby's birth was very easy and uh, 
Lama Lekpa Rumbo Che, Ngawa Lekpa Rumbo Che gave the name is Kuncho Lundru to the child. The Guru fast and learn things very easily. When he was four years old, he was playing with the other children and acting like the meditating and sitting on the rock and teaching the others and giving the blessing. So people were very surprised and said that this child was very unusual. So his father um, took him to the monastery to see the, his brother, who is the great yogi, Lama Ngawanyima. And he was the very strict retreat, and no one could go into the, his house. The doors and the windows were sealed. Only one window was open, so food could be put in. And the small pipe where the water uh, could be poured in the kitchen, through, through, through the kitchen. When the father brought his child, the boy, boy crawled through the little window <laughs> and did not want to come out. The Lama Ngawanyima said uh, he could live with him for a while. So the boy was happy and stayed with his uncle, uh, Lama Ngawanyima, when he, um, so he stayed and meditated, and boys uh, would pl uh, pray and himself, and the uncle gave us uh, some teaching, and boy did some the reading and writing, uh, play, memorizing, and he did very good. Then the Lama Lekpa Rinpoche, the boy stayed in the retreat until five years. Didn't want to come out. And then the Lama Lekpa uh, came out from his retreat. He had been the retreat in the Zinda retreat, which is uh, for uh, 13 years. After I came out, went to Talung Monastery and his monastery, and then the whole town and gave the there best regard, celebrated, and happy. And the Lama Lekpa Rinpoche, the Lama Lekpa Rinpoche, and the boy also, Lama Ngao Nima, and the boy, which is Dishan Rinpoche, also came out same time in the retreat. The boy saw the, uh, his parents and uh, played with his siblings. So that evening, his uncle took him back to the monastery. So he took the boy to see the uh, Lama Lekpa Rinpoche the first time. When uh, Lama Lekpa Rinpoche saw the boy and asked to Lama Ngawanyima, is this your nephew? Because he, Lama Lekpa Rinpoche, had heard about the boys, but he's very unusual. So Lama Lekpa Rinpoche asked the boy to pray and uh, read some uh, Buddhist books and Buddhist names. So Lama Lekpa Rinpoche was very happy and told the Uncle Ngawanyima, and this boy you should keep in the monastery all the time. For the next few years, studied with Uncle Ngawanyima and received many uh, teachings, initiations, and then also Lama Lekpa Rinpoche. Uh, meanwhile, people were talking about the boy was uh, maybe some Truku reincarnation. So the, his name was the uh, name was put in the candidate, the Truku. So Lama Lekpa Rinpoche sent a letter 
to the head of the such a set, and His Holiness Joshua Chen Rinche, and um, the His Holiness such a Tenzin forty-first uh, grandfather. He gave him, and uh, such a Tenzin gave him name Gunga Tembi Nima. He was recognized as the third Deshun Luri Tuhu. The Lama Lakbar Rinpoche kept him in Taolong Monastery and, and took him on many initiations. He told Aung Kang Aung Nima, now you should take the, um, this uh, Tuku to study in many parts of the uh, Kama area, which is the, especially um, Dege to the meat, uh, meat is the great master, Zongsa Chensei Chuji Lord, and many other lamas. And he was, then, then he went there, he um, studied in Zongsa College for many years, where he met many other Tibetan uh, the Buddhist masters from the all set. He met so many of them. So the name of his Deshun uh, Rinpoche was uh, using the names for the, uh, you know, the lamas. I kind of remember things. Of course, his the main one is the Gade Doji Chongang Lekpa Rinpoche, Zongsa Chense Chuji Lodu, Lama Shenga Rinpoche, Lama Chuji Gawa Rinpoche, and, and the Lama Agundu Rumboche, Lamanjan Jansi Rumboche, Dishmu Anjam Rumboche, Murkinche Kansa Kembo Tamba Rumboche, Nawalodu Shimbe Nimbo, and the Kembo Kansha Rumboche, Kansa Ken Rumboche, and also he studied Sanskrit, the Salama Kunu Lama Dinzi Jato. And uh, mm, of course, he's um, Holiness Dalai Lama, 14th, and uh, mm, uh, 16th Jawa Kamampa. He received all this teaching. And of course, the main thing, he received a great many teachings from His Holiness, um, such a teaching on Toto Wanchu, and His Holiness, such a Dachin, Nga Kunga Rinche, so he have to receive all of these teachings for these lamas, which I'm sure there's many more, but these names I always remember. And he also has uh, lots of the lamas that he was studied together, acquainted with the teaching, sharing Dharma, and a close friend, a Dharma brothers, like a Tengu Chinsa Rinpoche, Lubin Ken Rinpoche, Lama Kalu Rinpoche, Tari Rumbuche, Tomba Rumbuche, Dunjum Rumbuche, Minju Rumbuche, and Kembo Apit Rumbuche, and Donto Rumbuche, and there's many Sakya Kembos and Sakya, and Nujubje Tijin Rumbuche, and Gile Rumbuche, and a lot of Morkinchis Moba set. So he received all these teachings. You know, the point that these lamas he always remembers. When the finish, he learned the Buddha's all five signs. So I don't know the, all the names in the English. For example, like science, medicine, astrology, and poet, and you name it. The Shunrumachi learned all of this. And the Shunrumach usually do the astrology. He doesn't need a book. He looks at his hand. He, <laughs> he does it on his hand. He can answer. Though he never wasted any time. When he went into the retreat for many years, and the Lama Legpa Doji Chan gave the teaching and bought such a Lamji and the Drupta Gundu. And Lama Lakpa Rinpoche told to, and now he, he has to take, 
teaching trip around Kham area, which is the Minya, Dege, Hoko, Zashuka, all the Gulf Havens. So he did took the uh, teaching trip. Then he came back. Then he wanted to go to pilgrimage in central and west. And um, the, like Lhasa, um, Samye, and all the holy sites, and especially Sakya Anangor, which is his belong to. So um, we call it Uitzang, Uitzang pilgrimage. So he went, he did many offerings to Sakya uh, and Anangor. And he offers, made the Sakya monastery and the two podans, Droma podan and Punzo podan, and also more. He received the Lamji uh, and many other teachings from Ngor uh, Kinche Kansar And then he went to Sakya, um, uh, back to Sakya, received the teaching from His Holiness Sakya Chichen Ngawan Toto Wanchu. Dachin was his father and his stronghold. And also he received many teachings, uh, His Holiness Ngawan Kunga Rinche in the Dhammapada, and many sacred such a teachings, including Baja uh, Kilaya, such a tradition. Then he went to pilgrimage for the six months in the Te area which is the like, um, where upper part, um, where the, he had a great faith uh, because his uncle Ngawanyima uh, told all about stories. So he had a great faith at the Jitsu Melarepa. So he went six months to pilgrimage in the Te, and uh, um, where the Jitsu Melarepa was born, where he was the retreat with the Mm, what they call is Tagataso, um, which is horse teeth mountain retreat. And he visited all his towns everywhere. He did many so offerings and he went for six months. Then he came back to Sakya. And that time, uh, Sakya teaching. His Holiness such a teaching on Toto Wanchu family uh, invited to the Lhasa and the central Tibet and doing lots of um, uh, puja and offering to His Holiness Dalai Lama, long life, so forth. But in the Tibetan tradition, such a tradition, once they are a lifetime, when they became teaching, they have to go one time to um, Uyphe uh, Chambo, they call a great uh, central visit and do many uh, offerings and teachings and praise to the um, central government, which is Dalai Lama's government, as well as Dalai Lama's long life. And so, and when he came back from six months and uh, came back, he saw such a teaching in the family and upon a camp family came back from the Uife Chemo to Sakya. So there was a great welcome uh, celebration and completing trip to the Uife Chemo. So Deshun Rinpoche offered the Tenshu and a long, a long 30 December whip of mandala offering with a long, all the explanations mandala. So the such a teaching Rinpoche. And then uh, he received more teaching, and then um, he was invited at the Dhamma Puram, His Holiness uh, Ngawa Kunga Rinchen and his family invited to the Dhamma Puram. So um, uh, he did a uh, mm, Puram, he did lots of pujas, he offered long life initiation, the Amintayu's initiation, and purification, and uh, Kutu, which is the purification, uh, 
and every single day to Kendong Ayu Rinpoche, which is today uh, Kendong Ayu, Ayu Vaja Rinpoche, uh, who is today the His Holiness the Sakya Tenzin the 41st. And he did many a uh, long time. Then he went back to come Talung Monastery. He gave the Drupta Gundu and many other teachings. When he uh, and uh, other teachings, the Chinese then the Chinese came and made uh, things uh, difficult. He left the Talung Monastery and had a very difficult trip to the northern part of Tibet and came and he came and joined us in Lhasa. Then we escaped together through the Bhutan to India. We lived in India, Kalimpun and Darjeeling for a while. Then we were invited to the University of Washington Rockefeller Foundation in Seattle to teach and three years grant. And we could not go home to Tibet, so we stayed and uh, emigrated and stayed in the United States. So while Dishun Rinpoche was teaching University of Washington, and uh, sometimes he take a bus, sometimes he walks, sometimes people give us a ride. So on the campus, you know how many students, thousands, thousands of students. He was the only one who wears the traditional Tibetan Lama's clothes, you know, big, and his big, and a hat, and carry his Tibetan book here. So he walked through the campus, and uh, so, Everybody kind of agreed in. He, he always, he never wasted and uh, silent. He always said, Om Mani Pemme Hum, Om Mani Pemme Hum for everybody. And then he would say, Om Mani Pemme Hum, Om Mani Pemme Hum. So many students think Om Mani Pemme Hum means like good morning or greetings. <laughs> <laughs> so they come to the Om Mani Pemme Hum, you too. <laughs> so the many people, the students know Om Mani Pemme Hum. So this was later. Uh, Dr. Ramachan and I visited uh, His Holiness in India. His Holiness heard this, and then in the, he said, your uncle, Lagin, he teaches Omani Pemohun, so Omani Pemohun, the uh, American people, student, thinks this, this, this is greetings, like good morning. <laughs> so he, uh, you know, did that. So then, um, 1979, his Holiness Dalai Lama, I think 79 or 78, His Holiness Dalai Lama uh, visited to USA the first time in New York. Dishun Rinpoche led the Tenshu Mandala offering for long chanting, because those times there's not many Tibetan Lamas and monks here, so Dishun Rinpoche did long <laughs> chanting. And I heard later, I could not go, Dishun Rinpoche and Dajun Rinpoche went, I heard a lot of people said that was too long because they didn't understand what. But His Holiness Dalai Lama was very enjoyed and he wanted to know more about this is the Kambala gang, who is that? <laughs> so it was Dishun Rinpoche. So he did Tenshu offering. And then um, uh, Deshun Rinpoche laid Tenshu and uh, the His Holiness such uh, His Holiness um, 14th Dalai Lama. And also Deshun Rinpoche um, started such a center in Harlem, and which I we visited in uh, uh, New York. Uh, in Harlem, New York, and called the Jutsun Satya Center. He gave us many teachings around New York, uh, like uh, Long Island, New Jersey, Boston, California, and BC in Canada, and he lived over 20 years in USA. And he's also uh, the co-founder 
of the such a touching children, such a monastery where we live, and with uh, uh, so that he gave us more teaching here, and then he also traveled to many countries like Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, and raised money to the start of Talung Monastery in Nepal. He passed in 1987 in Nepal. So, and some of our students like John Vachuri, Sarah, they went to Nepal for the cremation, had many signs they saw. And then his reincarnation was found in Seattle. His father was the distant relative of the Shunrombache, and whose name is Tenzin Chunpei, and his mother is American uh, lady, uh, Daudoma Carolyn Massey. And uh, so he was born in uh, Seattle. And His Holiness, Saja Tijin Rinpoche, Drumbaporang, and His Holiness, Dachi Rinpoche and Prince Porang, both recognize uh, so Mandation Rinpoche's reincarnation. And then um, official um, named on the giver a uh, haircut ceremony and so forth in uh, mm, Nepal, March 8, 1994, and during the such teachings giving the uh, Dutakund teaching there. So, and so, the Shunchuku. Yangsi, we call it Yangsi, reincarnation, very educated. He started study in Nepal, his monastery. Then he went to such a college in India, and he finished such a college, I think, nine years or 11 years. Now he's continually studying there. And he visited uh, his monastery in Tibet a few years back. And um, so uh, now he's still studying, and later he will go back to Talung again and give more teaching. So this is a short biography, Deshun Rinpoche. I'm sure many of you still remember him. And uh, I, you know, his life story is that you cannot tell, or you have to tell months and months. But he is a, such a great yogi, Buddhist master, humble, and, uh, and uh, seems like he knows everything, but he always said, I don't know. But this is a uh, I, I'm sure many of you who met him are very lucky, and I'm very happy, lucky that uh, I'm his uh, niece. And his parents, he was the oldest son, oldest child, but his parents had uh, six children after him, and uh, three boys and three girls. And he always talked about it, you know, sort of, and the boy, girl, boy, girl, like him. And he was the, his name is Kuncho Lundu. He was the oldest one. And then my aunt, Jaja Nunzi Omo. And then a um, boy is, um, who's also boys, who's uh, died. He, uh, uh, I think he was lived only nine years. Uh, Dancing something. And then 
Then my mother, Prince of Roma, and then many of you may have met uh, Dr. Nima, Gunsa Nima, um, and then Anichime was the youngest. So all he had, uh, and this many his, uh, you know, children. So the legendary, he is a really, really great. His background, his uh, family back, father side around, it's many, many years uh, ahead of the monastery and uh, um, uh, Buddhist teachers and the doctors and so forth. So this is the short life story of the, uh, my uncle Deshun Rinpoche. And thank you. So nomde tamche se bane ro na nye we bra nam pa ju je je ga nam she palan ro ba se pe so le ro wa ro ba sho jam ba ba we che ta chen ba ta kun do song bo te yang te ji te da gun che je so da lo che ge wa de da tamche ra dong ho le la che ge som ji ta shi sho ngo la de ne som ji ta shi sem la la wa som ji ta shi Lame Goncho Sumjie Tashi Sho. To the chair. Thank you. I hope not too long. Not too tired. <laughs> and this is the Dejun Rumuche's picture. And uh, I had some picture. It's a Stephanie person gave me, so I like very much in the bigger and the very couple way. How old was he there? Um, maybe he came. We came here. He was 59. So he passed. You know, he 81, 80, Western 81, Tibetan 82. So, thank you.